I am extremely happy uh, to be here because uh, I understand that there are some a lot of uh, engineering students and faculty, and uh, I would like to, you know, take the pride that uh, the Indians uh, 4,500 years ago they were considered to be the best civil engineers in the world. So we are carrying forward the legacy, and uh, I would like to give you the actual evidence in this respect. Why you know we, we were considered as the best civil engineers in the past, and even today, of course, you know, we have some best brain, in fact, in the world in this particular field. So I will share my uh, uh, my screen, and I will start with my PPT. So uh, I will be discussing about the engineering capa capabilities of the Harappans, ancient Indians, because I always consider that Harappans have laid the foundation of the Indian culture, because most of the sciences, technologies, traditions, and cultural elements that were you know, introduced by the Harappans have continued till today. And uh, we know we you know, we are proud, you know, to uh, feel that you now we are carrying for that that particular legacy of the Harappans. Now, in the past, uh, maybe around 4,500 years ago, there were three civilizations in the world. Uh, we call them as ancient civilizations. And uh, let me tell you that all the civilizations flourished in Asia only. One of them, of course, is the Egyptian civilization, which flourished in the middle and upper reaches of Nile River. Then the Mesopotamian civilization, which flourished between Tigris, Tigris and Euphrates River in Iraq and part of Iran. And the Harappan civilization, it is also known as the Indus Valley civilization or you know, Indus civilization. Now this flourished in a, a very in a very large area in the northwest part of the subcontinent. In fact, the extent is very, very, you know, very. Uh, maybe if you can put together the area of the of the Mesopotamians and Egyptians, the Harappans have still double the area of that. So you can imagine, you know, how much you know area was occupied. So we find sites right from the border of Iran down south up to the border of Maharashtra, and from the western part of UP to the entire Makran coast. That was the area occupied. And all the three civilizations, of course, they had interaction, very strong connection with each other because of the trade contact. And also now it is clear that you know the developments were happening independently in these three, three regions. Earlier it was thought that maybe Mesopotamians were the earliest. And from there on the people began to move to the Indian subcontinent. That is not true. Now we know that you know the beginning of the agriculture started around 7000 BCE, and there is a constant development which culminated into the formation of the Harappan culture around 2500 BCE. So that is the you know uh, brief uh, history in this regard. Now, given a choice, and you know before I you know maybe mention that you know why you know uh, it, the discovery in fact you know, made exactly 101 years ago. And why this discoverer is considered to be the most important, one of the most important archaeological discoveries in the world in 20th century, mainly because before the discovery of the Harappan civilization, most of the scholars thought that there is a big gap in the history of South Asia, particularly Vincent Smith, one of the British scholars. He maintained that you know India jumps from Stone Age to the Stupa period, or the, that is the Buddhist period, and he said that you know, the settled life began much later, and there's a big hiatus in the history of this country. So that was the hypothesis or you know statement made by the scholars, and uh, with the discovery of the Harappan civilization, the antiquity of the settled life, they were pushed back by almost three thousand years, and now. We boast of a continuous history for almost two million years. The earliest stone tools found in Indian subcontinent that dated to around two million, that is 20 lakhs. From 20 lakhs to the present, we have such a tremendous continuity, uh, you know, in this part of the world. Perhaps, you know, India is one of the few countries. Maybe China, to some extent, has 
but uh, india has that continued for such a long period so we always connect ourselves to the roots and the roots go back to the harappan times uh given a choice you will always say that you would like to visit you know maybe egyptian side because you can see these type of pyramids or you know there are a lot of you know public architecture developed by the egyptian people uh, like pyramids for example or maybe you not know, these type of big temples you do find out know, these are the temples which uh, are dated to maybe are of 4500 or even 5000 you know years old so that is you know they have created such a monumental architecture in that part so everybody you know is attracted to this they want to see this also you know they also created more than life size images temples so these are the evidences from the some of the you know egyptian sites we can see lot of you know maybe life size or more than life size images you know produced by these people then in mesopotamia we have this type of ziggurats or the big temples these are also monumental architecture that was created by the by the egyptians and the mesopotamians the harappans have not done that and therefore you know most of the people always think that perhaps harappans were not capable or they were not competent enough to create this type of monumental architecture but that's not true let me tell you that you know the you know this is one of the tombs the uh, the tombs found uh, in uh, in ur this is the tomb of the uh, tutankhamen and the amount of wealth that was buried along with this with this uh, dead bodies or the royal dead bodies was incredible and you can see that you know this particular you know tomb was looted but still you can see the wealth that was buried along with the king his entire maybe uh, you know army you know lot of you know chariots you know which were used by him they were part of the burial goods so from that people think that the these civilizations were very very rich very prosperous but the difference between you know, the harappans and uh, the mesopotamians is that uh, harappans were capable perhaps i will say that they were much more competent in this respect because as i said that they were the best civil engineers in the contemporary world and they if they had decided they could easily have created this type of monumental architecture but they have not done because the system was different in mesopotamia and egypt they were ruled by the kings and queens so every development every you know maybe activity happened there was around these you know maybe rulers but in 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 uh, in the harappan region of course you know it was completely different story because harappans had some kind of a democratic set up what we call as the panchayat system you know the maybe uh, the decisions were taken collectively you know by the people for the people so that was the philosophy the Har- of the harappans that is one thing you now which is we should keep in mind secondly the harappans could have easily buried wealth along with the dead bodies but they did not do that because you know we find very symbolic maybe few pots few ornaments few maybe their you know maybe weapons but uh, because they knew that if you know if this wealth is buried along the dead body perhaps that is gone forever that cannot be used for any purpose literally the harappans have looted the mesopotamians and egyptians they are getting so much wealth from that side and they have used that wealth for the welfare of the common people whereas in mesopotamia and egypt the entire wealth was used for the you know maybe showcasing the status of the king as the king or the queen there so that was the difference the philosophy of the harappans was different and uh, sec- one thing is clear that the mesopotamians and egyptians they are very very aggressive people they uh, did carry out number of you know uh, invasions number of you know war, wars were fought by them and they had standing army this is actually evidence from some of the egyptian sites then also uh, you know they conquered some areas you know they subjugated the people and they made them slaves and these slaves were used by the people for the construction of those 
monumental architecture like pyramids, figurates, or life-size images. That was not done by the Harappans. Harappans were definitely peace-loving people, and they have created, they did create some monumental architecture, but that was for the uses of the people, like fortification, for example, or the water harvesting, water management system. Tremendous amount of you know evidence we have. So they have done this type of you know monumental architectural or civil engineering uh, for the sake of the people, and that was created by the community, by the people. So the concept of you know by the people for the people started from the Harappans. It is not a you know imported uh, concept at all. It is a very much Indian concept. Uh, this map gives you idea about you know the Harappan area. As I mentioned, that you know nearly 2.5 square kilometer area, 2.5 million square kilometer area was occupied by the Harappans. We have discovered nearly 2,000 sites, out of which there are five mega cities. In this map, you can see the location. The site of Rakhigadi was the biggest Harappan city, followed by Mohanjadaro, then Harappa, Dholavira, and Ganviriwala. And then, of course, the other settlements are in the category of towns, maybe regional centers, maybe manufacturing centers, ports, agricultural settlements, etc. So this is the composition of the settlements of the Harappans. And at number of sites, uh, including Rakhigadi, we have found the evidence of the gradual growth of the Harappan civilization. We use two terms. One is Harappan culture. The other one is Harappan civilization. And the culture starts maybe around 6000 BCE. And from 6000 BCE, there is a continuous development up to 2500 BCE, 2600 BCE. And then, of course, that culture has transformed into urban phase. And that urban or the prosperous phase of the culture is called the Harappan civilization, which lasted up to 1900 BCE. And then after that, there is a decline. And at number of sites, we have the evidence of the gradual growth, how the transformations taken place in their structures, in their maybe other equipments like pottery, ornaments, basic technology, basic sciences. You know, we have a lot of evidence from number of Harappan sites. Uh, this is one site, you know, in the Saraswati Basin, close to close to Rakhigadi. And here, for the first time, you know, we have found the early date for the beginning of the Harappan culture, 6000 BCE. And you know, there are successive levels. And in the successive levels, one can see the transformation, how that transformation happened. So we have very strong evidence at this site, at Farmana, other site which I excavated, and also the site of Rakhigadi. So, and then of course, you know, finally, they have achieved the, the development we started around 600 BC that culminated in the formation of urban phase or well-planned cities and town, that phase happened maybe around 2600 BC. So there was a long precedence, long developmental phase. It is not that suddenly the Harappan cities have come into existence. There's a long precedence for that. And we have found evidence in this respect. And finally, around 2500 BCE, they were able to develop this type of you know, well-planned cities, which are very, very hygienic and very clean. Now, uh, you know, uh, one, you know, the technology that was developed by the Harappans, which is followed even today, the most scientific construction method was developed by the Harappans. And today, the entire world is following following this particular tradition. Now, this method is called <coughs> sorry. This method is called English bond construction method. You know, in when the wall is constructed of brick, you know, one line of the brick is placed horizontal. Next line is brick. You know, is placed vertical. So most of these structures. This is the evidence from the site of Mohenjo-daro. At Mohenjo-daro. The, all the structures were made of burnt bricks and Harappans had created bricks in proper ratio. It, they were in 1 is to 2 is to 3 and 1 is to 2 is to 4. So that, you know, this ratio was very important so that, you know, they can undertake 
these type of scientific construction method and certainly you know they can maintain this perpendicular perpendicular angles also because of you know this particular uh, creation of the building material by the harappans that is one thing so they for the what you are seeing here this is it looks like a tower but this is a actually harappan vale you know it was constructed or built at this particular level but uh, this was dug maybe in uh, in 20s and that time the archaeologists were not really aware about how to dig wells because they were not really able to identify so they dug it you know like a tower but this is actually and in both in pattern you know, this is a you know proper wall and this is the uh, proper you know brick construction of the well and at both the places you know we could see the use of the english bond method it is wrong to call english bond because english people were not aware about this bond you know till 1400 ce and therefore i prefer to call this as harappan bond because harappans were the first to develop this particular concept in the world and they were first to use that and we have the actual evidence from the harappan sites harappan cities so that is one important contribution of the harappans then you know um, most of the you know town planning that was developed by the harappans that has not died down in fact even though maybe the the urbanization failed maybe you know around 1900 bc decline but still the knowledge was surviving in the indian subcontinent and then of course that knowledge was used in fact maybe in 6th century 5th century ce now bc for the development of second urbanization and then of course you know from that you know there is a continuity in the same layout and you can see you know you know this is the village in haryana and the layout of the village is exactly same as the harappan layout even the width of the roads are exactly same as the harappan the dimension is same the the roads are made by you know the brick paving there are structures on both sides and you know well planned so this is the you know pattern which has continued you know without any interruption and therefore as i say that you know we connect ourselves to the roots and the roots go back to the harappan times then you know these harappans also built they brought water to the settlement in fact you know because they did find difficulty in fact though know, the evidence from harappa and mohenjo clearly indicate that the water was quite deep in the in the uh, in the river uh, course and perhaps it was difficult for them to bring you know water to the settlement and therefore they they were the first in the world to develop this concept concept of a whale we have found you know a lot of these whales and at dolaivira the harappan whale is still being used by the people there so you can imagine you know the continuity in this particular respect and for constructing you know these whales they created the wedge wedge shaped bricks in fact one side of the one end of the brick was narrow and the other end was broad so these kind of bricks were made you can see here in fact the construction of the well here so this is a, again a very very important concept of the harappans then you know the other thing that you now they included incorporated in their uh, maybe structures were two important elements again you know they were the first in the world to think about this and implement these particular elements one is the bathroom inside the structure inside the house here you can see maybe you will feel that you know this is a modern bathroom but actually this is a bathroom excavated at the harappan site of kalibangan in rajasthan so they developed this particular concept not only that they also have you know produce you know these uh, tiles they of course you know they made terracotta tiles you no know, clay tiles which are fired but you can see the you know the 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 motifs on them so there is a continuity in that you know maybe the medium has changed you know over the period but this concept has not really discontinued discontinued at any stage most of us always thought that you know this concept has come from the west but actually it was developed here and maybe other you know it spread the idea spread to other parts of the world and went to maybe dispersed to other parts of the world 
So this is one, one important component which was introduced by the Harappans. And the other component that was found inside the structure is the toilet. And you can see here one of the, you know, the toilets excavated at the site of Harappa. And you can see here commode. Again, you know, as I, I would like to mention that the, you know, a lot of people think that the concept of commode has come from, come from the waste, but not that is not the case. Actually, this was the concept which was developed by the Harappans, and we have the earliest evidence of its kind anywhere in the world at the Harappan sites. What is also interesting is that inside the maybe bathroom, uh, we found one big jar, and in the big jar there is a small lota. So even today, you know the bathrooms in the ruler part we always have maybe sorry the toilets in the rural part we always keep a bucket of water and lota in that maybe mug so that tradition again continues from the harappans and you can see you know proper drainage system which was developed by the harappans harappan cities were very very clean because of the development because of the drainage pattern that was developed by the harappans we find the evidence of two kinds of drainage pattern. One is the closed drainage, like you know, we can see here, and the other one is the open drainage. The open, of course, is attached to the bathrooms, and the closed one, you know, to the toilets, making sure that you know that no dirty water is spread within the settlement. And uh, also, you can see here, you know, they are used simple, you know, very very simple you know, technique for developing this. You know, they followed the gradient pattern. The water was flowing from the higher levels to the lower levels. And you can see that they had a network of the drainage in the Harappan cities. So every house had a toilet and bathroom and they had proper outlet for both. And uh, there was probably, you know, the network available, which we have excavated on some sites. And also what we have found that you know, that network was joined, attached to the main drainage line, which was a big line. And that drainage line was taken outside the city wall and emptied somewhere. Now you can see this is the evidence of the main drainage at the site of Harappa. You can see the you know, amount, you know, this, uh, the size of this, you know, because the entire drainage of the city was attached to this. So they, they are quite big in size, and this opening is outside the city wall. As I mentioned, that you know, the because of that, the Harappans were able to maintain that you know strict cleanliness in the Harappan cities, and that was reflected in fact in the you know in the health of the Harappans. We have excavated some Harappan sculptural remains at Rakhigiri and other sites. And uh, some of my uh, Korean colleagues, they were interested in finding out the pathology, uh, you know, how the people have died, what type of diseases you know, prevailed at that time. And at the end of the study, they were so disappointed. They said that Harappans were so healthy. We don't find major disease in them. And that is mainly because the Harappans followed very, very strict, cleanly, clean, hygienic, in fact, life. And at, at, the, at the site of uh, Mohanjadaro, in the street, we find the, you know, the, uh, you know, garbage disposal pits also, or garbage disposal, uh, maybe, you know, small chambers that is found. So today in fact, you know, the, you know, we have forgotten this particular tradition, but let me tell you that this cleanliness is in our blood. And because of maybe, you know, some reasons we have forgotten that, but now, you know, we want to bring it back. And uh, there is a strong evidence of that. And, you know, this is the kind of evidence we have from the Harappan sites. This particular structure found at Harapp Mohanjadaro. Now, this is always considered to be a public bath. Maybe there are different, uh, maybe opinions, different hypotheses. Uh, some say that maybe this is just, uh, maybe, you know, a sweet water tank. Maybe some say that it was maybe for religious purpose. But let me tell you that, you know, the evidence, you know, when I visited the site of Mohenjadaro twice, in fact, I went there, I observed this structure very carefully. In this photograph, you can see that there's a well nearby. 
near the structure very close and uh, it seems that the water was drawn from the well and you know maybe filled the tank the tank was periodically you know maybe you know clean and repaired the flight of steps that you see here probably they were made for maintenance purpose not for people to go down every day and second important event is that there are a number of rooms all around the structure so this particular concept is very much part of the modern swimming swimming pool so i believe that you know the concept of swimming pool was introduced by the harappans and this is perhaps the best example of its kind you know anywhere in the world and then you know i would like to mention if i know how the harappans used to plan the cities this is a this is something that we should learn our planners should learn from the harappans and the best example is of course from the site of dholavira dholavira you know that this is the 40th world heritage site unesco has uh, you know has identified this as one of the important world heritage sites recently and this is the first harappan site which has got that tag this city was located in the desert part today of course you know this entire khadir island in kutch part of gujarat which is on the next to very close to the border of pakistan now this I, I, island the entire island is almost barren completely because it is all covered with uh, salt and you know that salt you know does not allow anything to grow on the on the land so it makes the land completely infertile completely saline which is of no use for you know for any purpose like you know agriculture or any you know in other purpose but harappans had to build this particular city because the harappans you know they did care for their trade because they were not in a position to have a lot of or they had no luxury of a lot of natural resources so they had to import the natural resources from different places they had the technology with them so they you know maybe imported the raw materials from elsewhere and they also developed number of you know important trade routes for example you know there was a trade route between sin and saurashtra because in sin there is very very important site lock like mohenjodaro and mohenjodaro has the evidence of very strong evidence of manufacturing activities we do have evidence of that at mohenjodaro and then of course saurashtra has a lot of natural resources or close to the natural resources because there are a lot lot of natural resources on the border of gujarat and maharashtra on the border of gujarat and rajasthan so they had access to this raw materials and they had to they develop number of settlements on the trade route even in spite of the fact that the area or you know the trade was was passing through through very very hostile climatic you know conditions uh passing through this uh, maybe a dry zone and the climate during harappan times was not much different from the climate that is today and the harappans knew that you know there is a always there is a dearth of water there so what they did in fact you know that harappans wanted to build this particular city they would develop you know maybe half a dozen, dozen settlements on at regular intervals so that you know the travelers who are moving on this route they can be given protection the goods can be given protection that was the you know kind of in, you know maybe intention of harappans and in case of the you know this particular city what they did you know they did a detailed survey of geological and geographical aspects and then you know they decided to establish this particular city between two rivers you can see here there's a river called manhar small river and the other called mansar these are the two small streams by the side of this dolavira city ancient dolavira city and you know in desert part you know that you know there is occasional rainfall but whenever there is a rainfall you know these rivers get flash floods and naturally you know because suddenly you know there is a gush of water so what the harappans did that they put series of dams we have actually evidence of that the survival of the you know remains of dam and there are series of maybe check dams on both the rivers and we 
surely say that you know these dams were built by the harappans because after the site was deserted it was never occupied again by any people you know people of any culture so whatever remains are found there they belong to the harappans so they put series of dams on both the rivers so this is really you know, very very important to learn how a you know city can be can be developed not just you know people have not just gone there and they have you know established this you know, you know city they went there they studied first the geography geology and then they plan how the city should be and then of course you know they have implemented that so here you know what they did you know whenever there is a rainfall maybe you know they have built these type of you know strong fortification walls at the site and here you know as i mentioned that you know that this this is one of the important monumental architecture harappans have created and certainly i can say that these were created by harnessing the you know maybe community efforts you know maybe entire maybe city entire settlement was involved in the creation of this type of architecture and they have done you know that that's so beautifully so this is for the you know done by the people for the people so this is a very very important evidence we have and uh, of course you know this city had four gateways on four sides uh, we have the archaeologists have excavated some of them and the gateways were very very you know very elaborate this is the northern gate which was very very elaborate because you can see that there are rooms on either side of this you know of the entry and these rooms were occupied by the security guards so they were making sure that whoever enters the city they properly identify the person and then only allow the entry so that point you know that maybe precaution was taken by the harappans and you can see that no one has to you know climb the flight of the steps then turn right climb the flight of the step then turn left and enter the city and here you can see the close up of the two rooms which were for the security guard and uh, now you can see the you know maybe the street how imposing the the you know the uh, gateway or the entry looks like so this is the kind of evidence you know we have very very systematically done and let me also tell you that you now harappans have used the locally available raw material for the construction purpose at dolavira stone is easily available so they have cut the stone in the shape of bricks and they have constructed you know maybe maybe these type of structures there maybe even their house walls were made of these you know stones whereas at harappa and mohenjo-daro there is no stone available so there they made bricks they fired the bricks and the entire city is very made of the burnt bricks so it is not that you no know, harappans were not able to you know maybe make burnt bricks at this particular site they were but this since the raw material is easily available why to make you know why to invest or waste the time in fact in creating mud bricks or the burnt bricks here so that is the kind of evidence we find then you can see the how you know how beautifully you know the you know cities were you know planned here you can see the meeting of the two main streets running in one runs in north south direction the other one in east west direction and how perfect in fact you know you can see the corners you know perfectly perpendicular you can use you know in the modern maybe measuring instrument to for this for understanding this particular uh, layout so this is a kind of layout and you can see the structures on both the sides there was no encroachment at all in the street they have followed that civic sense you know very very carefully very strictly and because of that this harappan cities were so you know well built how they they have done that perhaps we have no idea but uh, we have some instruments this is actually you know evidence found at some of the sites for example uh, this is a maybe a scale found maybe measuring scale found at the site of lothal and uh, there are markings on that probably you know these type of measuring instruments were made by the harappans the earliest evidence of kind of its kind there's one more in fact in the lower levels which is from the site of harappa and also you can see some from you know maybe from lothal again from kalibangan 
so these are the instruments measuring instruments used by the harappans so that means certainly the harappans knew mathematics we do, we have no evidence direct evidence about this because you know we have not been able to decipher the harappan script but from this evidence we can make inference that they were definitely you know good in pet in mathematics and because of that they were able to develop these type of measuring instruments for the construction purpose so we have strong evidence of that and then i come to the uh, most important part of the you know harappan city at dholavira perhaps the best evidence of water harvesting and water management not only in the contemporary world but even today this can be considered as the best example of its kind so we have such a long you know with such a you know hori tradition you know maybe you know which was uh, you know developed by the indian people so what they have done as i mentioned that you know that there were series of dams on both the rivers and then whenever there is a you know water maybe flash water coming or the flood water coming here they have used this you know for putting the dams again the gradient pattern they are again for uh, the regular intervals on the slope and this is the picture i took uh, during the rainy season so this type of you know flash water coming pad and probably the harappans have made this type of this type of maybe embankment for arresting water the water was diverted inside the settlement and they have not allowed probably the you know drop of water to escape from this the entire water was was diverted inside the settlement and then of course you now first what they did in the pattern to take care of set up suppose there is a sudden you know gush of water it might maybe create some danger to, to the settlement or the city so they created for the outlet of storm water drainage very very important very scientific so this is the first thing that they created and then of course you now inside the settlement the city is divided into three parts in all the three parts they have un dug underground water tanks and you can see these are the actual this is the actual evidence excavated from the site of dholavira so this one tank interesting now this tank is dug into solid rock almost 3 to 3 and 1/2 meters and how the harappans have done that that is a big question mark because they did not have if you want to excavate in the rock then you have to use maybe very strong iron or chisel or steel chisels iron was not available that time they only had copper and the harappans had developed the bronze technology even bronze cannot you know cannot be effective in excavating this in the solid rock and probably you know, they followed the method which is surviving even today if you want to you know dig this stuff up maybe in the in this maybe solid rock you try to take out the blocks so what harappans must have done that they must have you know maybe put or made deep and wide grooves on the periphery of the block and then of course you know they must have put wooden wooden pegs in them and they kept pouring water and because of water the maybe wooden pegs swelled and they must have cracked the stone so that cracked stone they must have removed the block and then perhaps with the help of maybe bronze chisels they could have smoothened the serene or surface at the bottom of these so this is how the harappans could have done and this is very 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 important if it does you find at uh, you know the harappan side you can see the perhaps the biggest tank that was excavated and again you can see flight of steps i strongly believe that the flight of steps were not for the people to go down because they will make the muddy you know water muddy but probably for the maintenance purpose this facility was created by the harappans so these they were all underground miss you know below the ground uh, also we find you know one a very interesting well gujarat is famous for step wells the beginning of that goes back to the harappan times you can see this is the earliest step well found anywhere in pat in india 
and Gujarat in pattern on number of these type of step basic were created in 6th, 7th century onward. And the most famous, of course, is Raniki Wow, which, has, which is also uh, a world heritage site. And it is maybe seven story underground. And it looks like, you know, upside down temple. You know, beautiful, you know, creation was done by the, by the uh, you know, ancient people. But the beginning of that goes back to the Harappan times. So this is the kind of evidence that we have. And you can see the, you know, systematic, you know, the layout of the city. You know, they had, you know, the fortification walls, the site was divided into three parts and each part was, you know, separately and, you know, fortified. Uh, there's upper town, which has got separate fortification, middle town has, and the lower town. Probably, you know, the people uh, who are, who are having, you know, maybe higher status in the society, uh, in the hierarchy, they were perhaps living in this part. The middle town may be owned by people who were maybe they had their offices or maybe some kind of maybe how you know how to execute the things. So that kind of maybe you know evidence is found here, and also the lower town maybe the common people lived here. People of people, you know, all the different uh, maybe people following different maybe occupation they lived there. Maybe farmers even. Farmers may not be there because the land around is not good for agriculture, but there may be masons, there may be workers, maybe merchants, because this is connected to the tra trade network. So these people were perhaps living here in the lower town. And then we also have a lot of evidence of manufacturing activity. So the craftsmen also may have lived in this part. So this is a very, very important evidence. And in this picture, you know, also between uh, the upper town and the low middle town, there's a big gap, big open space. Now that open space is considered to be the open ground. In fact, perhaps you know the excavator says that calls it as a open uh, stadium. And if that is the case, perhaps again this is the earliest evidence of its kind. Perhaps you now the public functions or even sports were perhaps performed there. So that is the kind of evidence we find at the site. And the you know there are. These have water tanks of different sizes, different shapes, spread all over the city. In all the three parts, we have the evidence. And apart from that, we also find the evidence of big whales. The whale that is found here, that is the biggest whale found anywhere in the Harappa city. So why they have done that? Because suppose the water in the tank, you know, subside, or maybe you know, uh, is exhausted then there is always water available in the deep wells. So perhaps you now that water was taken out, you can see that you know, there's, a flat, uh, there's a flat stone here, and there are groove marks, grooves, groove marks on that. So that indicates that perhaps you no know, water was drawn constantly from that well. And probably you know, that was put in the, in the uh, underground water channel, which you can see here, but you know, there's evidence of that. There is evidence of water channel here, which connects this particular tank. This tank was connected to this tank. Every tank was interconnected, making sure that, you know, that the tanks are filled one after the other. And there is always running water available. The big, big lessons, you know, in fact, they are left behind. They have overcome the adverse situation and they have developed such an effective, very simple, but very effective technology. And today, let me tell you that, you know, the nearest town to Dolaivira is Rapper, which is 130 kilometers, not 110 kilometers. And between Rapper and Dolaivira, there are hardly four or five villages. And people are not making settlements there, mainly because of the dearth of water. But if, you know, this evidence, you know, indicates that, you know, we can learn something from the Harappan water management system. If this system is applied today, you know, every village can do that. I tell you the entire Kutch, which is desert today, it will be a green land. So there's a lot to learn from the Harappans, not only in terms of their town planning, not only in terms of how to, you know, how to develop the concept of city, how to execute that, but the knowledge system that they created, how that knowledge system is relevant to even today. 
a lot of knowledge system can be put to use even today. For example, you know, they develop a lot of basic technologies. And even today, in fact, you know, there are a lot of communities in the in the in South Asia who are dependent on the traditional knowledge system. And the traditional knowledge that, should, that they use is exactly in you know, a 5,000 years old knowledge system they're using. So, you know, we are continuing this tradition and uh, the roots of that lies in the in fact in Harappan you know period. This is a part of the underground water channel that was excavated. You can see you know how big the water channel you know underground water channels are. These are women standing here perhaps it is seven seven and a half feet uh, tall it is four feet wide and you can see the you know the stones are eroded that indicates you know, how the volume of the water that was flowing through this and because of that, the stones are eroded. Secondly, now the most scientific evidence that we find is that at regular intervals there are air ducts. Even today, this is the you know very very important component of the drainage system that we follow today because to prevent the drainage from the blockage, for the maintenance purpose, these type of air ducts are provided. So that is the kind of evidence we find. So this is the most scientific technology that was developed by the Harappans. Today, if you want to use this, we don't need maybe foreign collaboration because this was done by the Indians. We don't need a lot of funding for this because this can be done by the maybe community. And this is the most tested you know, technology that was used by the Harappans. So we should maybe we can follow this technology. There's so much to learn from the Harappans. And also, you know, they also uh, use, you know, for decorating the city. They made maybe some polished stone pillars also. We have found actually in situ uh, segments of the pillar, maybe pillar bases, part of the pillar. We always thought that is the concept of polished stone pillar. This particular concept or technology has come from the West, not, not from the West, from, the, from Iran, from Persepolis, maybe around 3rd and 2nd century BCE. But that is not the case. We have the earliest evidence. Probably you know, this concept has gone from India to Iran not the other way around so we have this evidence a uh, lot of ev it's, this evidence is found and these are some of the you know highly polished uh, these are some of the bases of different sizes and different shapes these are some of the components of the pillar and how beautiful the pillars were made by the harappas they were all you know, polished and also we find in you know, a lot of evidence of the manufacturing activity they had separate workshop within the city the city had you know different uh, segments maybe some in some area people are living some area was devoted for the manufacturing activity in some area maybe some public functions were carried out so this is kind of arrangement that was made by the harappans and you can see the evidence right we have actually this is a copper workshop we have furnaces where the copper was heated and melted here you can see here there are you know maybe anvils here you now they can maybe uh, strike the hot copper or even cold co you know copper can be can be beaten on this into desired shape so that is that's kind of evidence we have from the sides the other important creation of the harappans uh, this is also perhaps i will say that this is the engineering marvel of the harappans they develop the trade because they realize the importance of the trade as i mentioned that you know the harappans were getting a lot of wealth for the west and that wealth was used by the harappans for their own development and that is how the harappans have evolved from simple you know rural culture to urban culture at one stage and this is a very very important lesson that you know that was that is survived i always give the example of japan because uh, japan was completely destroyed almost uh, in second world war i have seen the destruction at hiroshima and nagasaki and the entire world realized that perhaps Japan will never rise. But let me tell you that Japan rose again, you know, on its you know, very firm feet within you know 13 years. In 1964, they showcased the economic development that they made, and they became a world economic power, you know, maybe in 1964, which they uh, showcased during the Tokyo Olympics. And Japan followed the same method, same maybe mechanism as the harappans did harappans imported raw materials from some contemporary cultures from outside the harappan region 
Japan also started importing raw materials from India and China. These were the developing countries at that time. And then Japan had Harappans had technology in their, you know, with them. The Japan also had technology with them. They started producing mass goods. Harappan started producing mass goods, and those goods were were traded to hinterland communities, also to international community. And so Japan did the same thing. They started producing finished goods, and they started supplying finished goods to the same people, same countries, from whom they were importing raw materials. So this is how Japan could flourish. This is how ja the Harappans could flourish. So that is a big lesson, which is again left behind by the Harappans. And for developing or for facilitating the international trade, particularly the maritime trade, they were the first in you know, the pioneers in the world to develop maritime trade. And so for that purpose, they created the infrastructure for that purpose. There's a site called Lothal where uh, the government of india is developing the national maritime heritage museum and complex and uh, here in fact you can see this is the structure that was excavated by one by archaeological survey of india in, in 50s and there was a lot of debate happening you now whether this structure is a uh, you know what is the structure so sr Ra was the excavator so he invited uh, the people from uh, indian navy and he showed them that you know, this is the you know kind of evidence. What do you think about this? So after studying, investigating you know, in detail, the Navy people came up with the explanation that they said that this is the, the only function of the structure could be a dockyard. Because you know this is a very, very large structure. The uh, you know, in case of the uh, you know walls of the houses or the structures. The bricks were set in, you know, in mud mortar, but here the bricks bricks were set in bitumen, which is a waterproof substance like a tar. So that is one very important, you know, evidence. Secondly, inside the structure, you know, scientists have found or they have discovered some anchor stones, some marine marine sails, in, you know, inside. So that means, you know, that you now this was used as a maritime port come a dockyard so there's a you know proper you know maybe you know inlet proper outlet for these and uh, you know very very huge structure it is four meter deep 240 meter wide 39 or 40 meter wide uh, 240 meter you know long so this is a structure that is found so the evidence that is found a lot you know when it was excavated this is the most important and clinching evidence there's a sloping platform it is called a wharf which is attached to this particular structure. And Navy people say that you no know, warp is always required for sliding good up and downs. And uh, this is a very, very important component of the uh, of the dockyard. So they say that you know, they come up with the explanation that this could be the earliest dockyard. This is the dockyard of the Harappan people. And this is the earliest dockyard anywhere in the world we are the people you know, who have developed these type of maybe technologies, these type of concepts. We have implemented them, and we are pioneer in developing ships and boats. This is the, you know, the uh, maybe uh, functioning of that when it was alive. Uh, the sea, it is not directly on the sea, but it is a river and port. Maybe when, during the high tidal period, the sea water comes onto the site. And that is, you know, during that time only, maybe the ships can come here or go back. So this is the kind of evidence we have. You can see here in the reconstruction, you know, how the ships can be brought in. They, you know, whenever they want, they can simply, you know, uh, de, you know, uh, hydrate this, uh, or they can remove the water from these. They can use this for building ships, for repairing ships also, and also they can use this as a port. So this is a very, very important creation of the Harappans. So the very advanced technology was adopted by the Harappans. And this is the creation of the Harappans. And uh, you know the entire world has learned, in fact, from the Harappans how to develop the modern dockyards and how to build the ship and boat. You can see this is the evidence of the two kinds of boats they built. One is the uh, plank boat with the flat bottom. This was the ship uh, which was used for long distance, maybe travel, maybe deep deep sea travel because 
you can see inside the uh, boat or ship there is a there is a structure house inside when you are traveling in pattern you know, and you know in number of nights you need this facility and there are also birds there because birds can locate the nearest when you are traveling in the sea the birds can locate the nearest land so this is the facility this is the evidence that we have and today in patna when i visited uh, monjadado i could see that you know, exactly the same replicas of the flat bottom you know of the ships and boats are being used in the you know by the local communities for travel for trade and this is one of the you know one of the photographs of that the other boat that they use was the boat made from the long grass reed reed boat it is called and this is made from the grass even today of course you know that you know this type of boats are made in iran iraq uh, which is the part of mesopotamia and probably you know the mesopotamians developed this technology and probably harappans borrowed these but you know the in case of the flat bottom wooden plank boats are concerned this is the harappan invention so this is the kind of evidence uh, we find and finally uh, you know who are the people you know who have developed the civilization perhaps the most advanced civilization in the contemporary world and uh, certainly you know, we do find some urbanization in, in mesopotamia we do find some urbanization in the egyptian cities but that urbanization was in the form of maybe those big pyramids big temples big life size images and the development around the palaces only we don't have palaces so that one thing is clear that you know there were no kings and queens in the harappan levels so that is quite clear and there were a number of hypotheses some people say that you know harappans uh, maybe you know they were uh, local people a lot of scholars thought that you now they came from outside particularly the british uh, or the colonial historians archaeologists they always thought that you know, people from the west particularly from mesopotamia or egypt they came here i just showed you that too. i showed you one picture that you know mesopotamians particularly and the egyptian they had standing army and some scholars mentioned that the you know, the egyptians even mesopotamians were very aggressive people and probably they came here and develop a new civilization that is all you know uh, all without any evidence of course this is the hypothesis but now we have a very strong evidence you know we have done this uh, the dna uh, of the harappan people and the title itself main, you know suggests that you know an ancient harappan genome lacks ancestry from stepi pastoralists or iranians because it was always thought that you know the so called aryans came from outside and they killed the local people and they established a new ancestry here that is not the case and this particular research was published in a very very prestigious journal called shell uh, which is considered the, the top most science journal in the world and uh, in 2019 uh, after the publication there is a big organization called international conference on genomics and they identified nine breakthrough researches in the world and this research was considered to be one of them so this means that you know the research and the evidence that we have created that has been accepted by the entire world community world scientific community and it is now clear that the distinct south asian ancestry developed maybe around 12000 years ago the same genes continue in the harappan people and from harappan it continues to the modern people also so most of us you know from andaman nicobar to kashmir and from afghanistan to bengal most of us are carrying the strong harappan genes there is a lot of mixing of course right from the beginning of settled life there is a lot of mixing happening so a lot of ideas you know where flowing from one region to another region people were coming from you know outside people were going you know maybe to different places uh, also the evidence that we you know we have uh, found clearly mention that the Arab, first harappans began to go to iran and to central asia and then after that you know there is a lot of reciprocal movement happening among the people so the movement started you know or the space of the movement uh, maybe picked up after the development of the contact by the harappans with that region and that is reflected again in the properly in the archaeological data so now no doubt that the most of the developments that is done in indian subcontinent right from the beginning of agriculture cultural development from rural culture to urban 
that was all done by the indigenous people and uh, you know we are proud about that you know so the knowledge system that was created these are the people who were the best civil engineers in the past they were very much co competent capable of creating you know so many you know uh, maybe uh, facilities infrastructure for the common people this is the difference harappans have created these facilities for the common people whereas in west that was created only for the ruling class not for the common people so that is the end of my you know a, a, a brief talk but i would like to mention that we are proud about this development and this is the most scientific evidence we have created thank you very much